Hello world, this is Chris with another unboxing. So this is the Ville Ross Raspberry Pi 4 kit. Uh, one thing that's nice about this kit is it does come with a lot of the things that are necessary to get going with your Raspberry Pi. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut the seal here. As I've mentioned before, there is an affiliate link down below in the description that does not change your price at all. However, it does give us a little bit of credit for the videos that we do here. Let's go ahead and pop in the top right off on this box. And we can see all the items in the kit in here. So we have the Raspberry Pi 4 clear case, and this does come with a cooling fan. That's definitely nice to have with the Raspberry Pi 4. It does create a little bit of extra heat. And then we have the power supply itself. This is a USB-C power supply, and it does have that on-off switch built in. And then you have the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, system itself. Then we have the micro HDMI to HDMI cable. Then we have one of their business card with some information about uh, if you're happy, unhappy, etc. Their contact information. The Vilross sticker. That's kind of an interesting sticker. Certainly looks like a uh, blue circuit board system. That's a pretty cool logo. Then you have the heat sinks here. So that those heat sinks are necessary uh, to help cool your system. And these, as I mentioned, the Raspberry Pi 4 does create some additional heat as it operates. And then you have the SD card information. And here at the bottom is a quick start guide. Let's set the box off the side. The quick start guide does have the information for the Raspberry Pi 4. It has uh, basically your setup information. We'll go through uh, how to put everything together here in another video, but let's just go through an inventory of what we have. So this is the SD card uh, package here. So inside this should be the SD card itself inside of a holder as well as an adapter I believe is included within this kit. Yep, there's the adapter. So as noted right here, this is a 32 gig SD card and it does have Noobs 3.2 on it. And then you have your uh, USB adapter here. Let's go ahead and open this up. So what's nice about this is you can uh, put this directly onto your system and if you wish you can change the files that are on this SD card. And this so here we have the adapter. This is the Vilross USB to SD card adapter. It is kind of cool. They have the logo right there on that. So you have your USB interface and then you have here right underneath on that interface you actually have a built-in SD card reader. So that's a pretty slick add-on there. And then inside of this case is your actual SD card. So this is the 32 gig SD card. So you have plenty of space for everything you need to do on your Raspberry Pi. And then you can pop this unit directly in. And there we go. So you have your SD card and then your USB interface. You can plug that in. Everything works well. I don't think it actually should even fit. No, because the razor, it won't fit in the other way. So it should be pretty easy for you to determine. Uh, what it takes to put that in. You definitely cannot put it in this way. I imagine if you force it enough, you probably could manage it, but let's not do that. So if you want to make edits to anything that you have in your SD card, they do include that. If you want to put a new operating system, a different operating system, anything that you wish, you can put that right on there. These do have the capability of doing some of the retro gaming and a lot of the other different options. But we're going to keep noobs on there and do updates once we get things going. Okay, let's open up that micro HDMI to HDMI cable here. This is nice. It does have, being the Raspberry Pi 4, does have dual outputs for video. It does come with a single cable, so this is pretty simplistic. Just you got regular HDMI on one end, and then you have your micro on the other end that you can plug directly into your Raspberry Pi 4. Now you do have to make sure when you put it in the case that it is snug into that port because you will not get video output if you do not have it plugged in all the way. Uh, one of the kids in our class actually just recently reported his home kit was not operational and he did some troubleshooting and determined it was not plugged in all the way. So Ethan, that's a shout out to you. Good job doing your troubleshooting. Glad you were able to figure it out and hopefully we can get you online here soon. So let's go ahead and look at the actual Raspberry Pi 4. So this is the actual system itself. This is the 4 gig version, and quite honestly, uh, I would suggest if you're going to get a Raspberry Pi 4, you might as well get the 4 gig version. There are other versions that are slightly cheaper with less RAM, but 
really when it comes down to it. Uh, the cost difference does not quite equate a big savings, and it's, it's just worthwhile to go ahead and go all out. Let's open this unit up here. Let's see. It looks like it is sealed. I thought it was on the end. But there's a little seal right here. And then pop that open. And there is the Raspberry Pi 4 itself. A little surprised it doesn't come in a static-free bag. However, it works. This, instead of putting it down the plastic, I put it on this. And then we have an informational document right inside that box. So this is a multi-language document. Uh, just has safety guides, etc. A lot of stuff in here. Like I said, it is multi-language. So depending on what your language may be, uh, you should have just about anything that you need inside there. We'll go ahead and set that off to the side and, and move the Raspberry Pi 4 itself. Okay, so this is one of my favorite cases, quite honestly. Uh, I have come to enjoy clear cases on just about any types of electronics. Uh, so I do seek out this specific case a lot of times, and I do like a lot of the way that they have things laid out. Uh, it's one of the things I like about the Villaros kits is it does come with this case as well as that cooling fan. So let's go ahead and open this up. And as you see right there on top of the box, you have their nice logo again that we saw in that sticker. Pulling that case right out, nothing else in the box. And you can see it is entirely clear. Uh, we do have the dual HDMI ports right here. We have our power and uh, we have an audio jack. And then on the other side, you have your USBs as well as your LANs. Uh, it does have a little protective plastic film. So let's go ahead and pull that off. And you do see there is the Villaros cooling fan in there. And like I mentioned, it is really, really nice to have that fan available. Um, and I prefer to have it on in most cases. It does just help to keep the system a little bit cooler. I have seen people, they'll do special logos for the venting portion on the case. Uh, that can be nice to look at. However, quite honestly, I would prefer more airflow than a cool looking logo on my clear case. So you'll see here, there's a lot of opening, a lot of venting that allows just more and more airflow and you really don't want to restrict your airflow just for the sake of something that looks cool um, you don't want to cause any damage to your raspberry pi so and everything should just pop right apart here here it goes it is pretty snug just be careful about how you take it apart Let's see what the screws here. Screws to be used for camera module only. Screws are not used to install Raspberry Pi. So that's being an important piece. They do include these screws. However, as noted, the Raspberry Pi simply just sits in there. Okay, we'll set that off to the side. And then you have your heat sinks themselves. And th these do come with self-adhesive strips right on them, so you can apply that directly to that Raspberry Pi chips. Now, there's a couple of different chips that need to be cooled, and it'll show that in the book that we'll review in another video. You do have this one, this one, this one, and this one. And the cool part about this kit is it does come with the heat sinks that are specifically designed for those chips to help cool them. And the next section here, we have the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, USB-C power supply. So this power supply does have that built-in switch, which is really nice. And here we are. Looks like we have a uh, indicator LED here. And this is the switch. Now, as I mentioned, it does have the switch included as a nice mechanical switch. You do, if you wish to use any regular USB-C with a high enough amperage output, that certainly will work. Or to unplug it or to turn it off, for example, you can just unplug it. But quite honestly, the, having the physical switch is, is quite handy to have, especially if you want to do a quick turn off or if you want to do a reboot and you're not accessing it via the command line or you're having an issue with the unit, you just flip the switch or if you want to have it off while you're not working with it and turn it back on, just pushing the switch is, is really nice to have. Now, you don't have to have this if you don't have a kit and you just have a regular USB-C power adapter, you could, certainly can use this. 
Uh, this is a 5.1 volt at 3000 milliamps, so it should be a 3 amp output. And what's nice about that extra amperage output that you don't typically see in your regular phone chargers, if say most of the fast chargers are just a little over 2 amp, uh, with that 3 amp you can help to power some of your extra peripherals if you're going to be doing other things or working on the breadboards, etc. So there's a lot of nice things about that. All right. That seems to be just about everything in our Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gig version uh, from Vilros here. So this is the kit that we'll be putting together in another video, and I advise you to certainly watch that video. As I had mentioned, we do have the affiliate links below. I'd certainly appreciate it if you would like to purchase this to utilize that affiliate link. Hopefully you learned something. Please like and subscribe below. Thank you for watching.